In this video, we will show the different steps of the process and post-process procedure that are followed in the additive manufacturing technique. Before we start, let me introduce us. We are David, Mandana, Umberto, Ambrosia and Giuliana, a group of postgraduate students from the top-notch European institutions. We are working together to address the quality assurance and implementation of precision engineer practice in the 3D printing process. By looking at the pound square logo, the first question that comes into our mind is, what does it stand for? So basically, pound square is an acronym for Precise Additive Metal Manufacturing. This is a Marie Curie innovative project founded by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 program, in which industries and academia work together to improve the performances of the SLM process by focusing on robustness, predictability, metrology, and developing computer-aided engineering method to empower the AM design. If you didn't come across our previous lectures on topology optimization and process modeling, don't worry, this link will guide you. If you're new to the additive manufacturing field, here's a short recap. Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is a process used to create an object by depositing material layer by layer. The selective laser melting is one of the possible methods to do so, and is one of the most commonly employed these days. In this process, a laser source melts a thin layer of metal powder that forms the cross-section of the desired object. The first step is to create a 3D model, which is lies in layer of varying thickness, depending on the final desired quality. In the printing machine, the powder is uniformly distributed on what we call powder bed, the laser scans the first layer and the material solidifies into a cross-section of the model. The powder bed is lowered of a fixed quantity and a new layer of material is applied. Again, the laser scans the layer according to the model's cross-section. The process is repeated layer after layer until the part is finished. Before printing, the machine has to be filled with the raw material, the metal powder. Here you can see the operator first pouring the powder from a box into the different feeding chambers and then leveling it with the spatula, pressing it down to compact it and spreading it evenly on the top. As you can see, here safety is extremely important. The operator is wearing a lab coat, gloves, safety shoes and a face mask to avoid breathing the loose powder. If the operator does not wear corrective glasses, it is also recommended to wear safety glasses. When the process is completed, the machine is opened and the part must be retrieved from the powder bed. To do so, the building platform is raised and separated from the machine. The platform must be rotated and shaken accurately to be sure that all the powder is removed. And with a brush, the powder is gently removed from the printed object, avoiding any type of damage to the product. After that, it's possible to use a special vacuum cleaner for metal powders, with a brush top to clean the parts more efficiently. Also in this cleaning step, safety is very important. After the manufacturing step, AM procedure parts enter the final phase of production. Most post-processing procedure include support removal, heat treatment, surface finishing, possibly conventional machining, and finally cleaning. After that, quality inspection is performed with different techniques, ranging from manual inspection to X-ray computed tomography. The purpose of this operation is to achieve optimal mechanical and surface properties together with high dimensional accuracy, which are of critical importance for high-value applications. So why do we have to post-process the AM parts? Let's explain it with a couple of examples from the aerospace and medical industry. Components employed in these fields must have a long working life because replacement is expensive and difficult, but most importantly, they must guarantee high mechanical properties since a failure could have catastrophic results. The hip replacement is also a good example for surface property in action. High surface roughness is wanted in those areas where the bone will be fusing with the implant, while elsewhere, a mirror finish is needed to reduce bacteria proliferation, local corrosion and avoid friction.
One of the post-processing options is surface remelting. This is done with a laser scanning the surface of the part in order to decrease the surface roughness. The metal becomes liquid again and fills the valley and cavities, achieving in the end a shiny surface. This is why this post-process is also known as laser polishing. Another option of laser post-processing is the laser ablation, which consists on removal of material from a solid surface by irradiating it with the laser beam. In our case, the laser ablation is performed with an ultra-short pulse laser, which means the laser is emitting light in the form of very short pulses in a high frequency. Because of the high energy of each pulse, the portion of material heated by the laser is sublimated and we witness the formation of holes, lines or entire areas of material removal. We can use the laser ablation to make small holes in the additive manufactured parts, or to improve the quality of holes that already exist. A second option is using the laser ablation to remove material from specific areas of the part, where the shape after the building process is different from the design geometry. These differences are pretty common and can be caused by deformation due to stress originated during the process, excessive material deposition and other reasons. If you like this movie and you think that someone might be interested, why not sharing with them? You can also visit the project website, but above all, thanks for watching.